Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. So glad that you stopped in. If you like, press the like button. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. You can share my videos. You're more than welcome. And I appreciate, I haven't said that yet tonight and I've did a few videos, uh, my subscribers that I do have, I appreciate so much. They're just awesome. And uh, just grab a cup of coffee and sit back. And just listen to me read. <laughs> That's about all I said on the last video, isn't it? <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, this is T Tucker Carlson. Host of Fox News Channel's Tucker Carlson Tonight. Is calling out leftist tyranny once again as it is now focused on Twitter CEO Elon Musk. For his focus on free speech with his newly acquired social media platform. James Whitlock of Blaze TV joined the program on Monday to give insight into the groupthink phenomena that Twitter has been using for years to shape the thoughts of the public. Tucker compared Musk Ascension, Ascension, A S C E N S I O N, Ascension, as the most dangerous man in the world to that of Saddam Hussein and asked Whitlock a simple question, what is Musk's crime? Whitlock responded by saying that his crime is potentially ratting out the people that have been using Twitter, social media apps, as mind control. And that is what they've been doing with Twitter. They've been controlling the narrative and what people are allowed to think. The attacks on Musk have quietly escalated as he's implied that he'll be sharing information on past censorship that occurred under the prior management and ownership. Musk responded to a tweet on November 23rd about disclosing internal discussions surrounding the censorship of Hunter Biden's laptop before the 2020 election. His response was, this is necessary to restore public trust. The left has come out swinging with a long list of companies pulling advertisements from the platform and a prominent organizations and individuals leaving the platform altogether. On Monday, Musk tweeted that Apple was threatening to remove Twitter from the App Store but wouldn't tell us why. It looks like Apple and Musk are going to blow for blow as Musk, Musk shared an insider secret on Monday disclosing that Apple puts a 30% tax on everything you buy in the App Store. Ooh. In addition to the mass, mass leftist exodus, the media machine has conjured enough distaste for Musk that it's now an issue being discussed at White House briefings. The White House has confirmed they are keeping a close eye on the platform. Musk, along with other reasonable people, is wondering why in the world these companies and individuals are so uh, vehemently against having a platform that allows free speech. Why are they attacking free speech? I mean, if the, if the speech is um, proper, no foul language, you know, and it's acceptable, my goodness. I don't know. And I've got that one there. Hang on, I'm looking. Now, I'm not sure if I've got this one or not. Trump attorney calls out special prosecutor Jack Smith as a bad actor. I'm not sure what this one is. I'm going down the sideline here, so just hang on a minute. Now, this is that Alina Hubba. Again, former President Donald Trump's attorney spoke to Newsmax on Wednesday about Jack Smith. Smith is a special prosecutor appointed by Attorney General Merrick Garland to investigate Trump for January 6th. Hubba said Smith intends to politicize the inquiry and is not a good actor. 
the attorney for Trump, Trump's question Smith's impartiality, and rightly so, since his family has been known to support Biden's 2020 campaign. Hubba calls Garland's appointment of Smith an utter politicization citation of the legal system. Smith is a veteran ethics and war crimes prosecutor, with the problem lies in his ties with the Biden administration and his family's uh, relationship with the Obamas. He is set to investigate Trump's alleged involvement in the breach of the U.S. Capitol on January 6th and the illegal classified documents regarding his Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach, Florida. Attorney General Garland appointed the special counsel after the former president's announcement that he is running again in the next ele election against Biden. Garland also stated other recent developments that prompt prompted the decision, but did not clarify those, such as an appointment underscores the department's commitment to independence and accountability in particularly sensitive matters. Garland continued, he also said that a special counsel will allow prosecutors to make decisions indisputably guarded by the facts and the law. In response to Jack Smith being appointed special counsel, Elena Haba, or Haba, they have been trying to do this for so many years, and when you do have, and when you do have to have evidence, they struggle to find it. This is complete politics over law. And Haba pointed out that Smith donated to President Joe Biden's campaign while his wife made a documentary with the former First Lady Michelle Obama. Meanwhile, the left hails him as fair, ethical, and unbiased. She called out the decision as part partisan. Smith is not bipartisan, as he should be. But special counsel appointed by the Attorney General also cannot be removed without his consent. Merrick Garland organized the Mar-a-Lago raid and approved unorganized subpoenas, so it's unlikely he will remove Smith from the case. Now, I did a video uh, to where Biden took, um, what do I want to say, pride in organizing the raid on Mar-a-Lago. Now it comes out here that Merrick Garland organized. So was he with Biden? Because Biden took credit for it. <laughs> oh. Habba added the Americans are sick and tired of the left going after Trump while inflation increases and in tax dollars go to Democratic investigations. Well, yeah, I agree there. She employed... Uh, the public to consider what they are paying for. She asked listeners to consider what life looks like when Trump was in office, adding, this is all games, gamesmanship that has no business in this country. We're paying for it, and it shouldn't be. She is so right. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And Republicans, now I do have another one on this. I do think it is on my desktop. Republicans say, um, and Mayorkas has got to go. Yeah, Republicans in Congress are doubling down on their calls for more security at the southern border and for the impeachment of Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. On Fox News, Sunday Morning Fu Futures, Representative Ronnie Jackson, Republican of Texas, said the House GOP would absolutely impeach Department of Homeland, Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas as he has to go, Jackson said. There's been no accountability in the administration for anything they have done, whether it's been the economy or COVID or the disaster overseas in Afghanistan or our border. Representative Ronnie Jackson uh, said that the House Republicans would impeach Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro and Mayorkas. 
Ronnie Jackson, House GOP, will absolutely impeach DHS Chief Mayorkas. Representative Ronnie Jackson, Republican of Texas, said on this week's broadcast of FNC's Sunday Morning Futures that House Republicans would. Now, Republicans are ready to resume building the wall at the southern border earlier this month. MacArthur called on Mayorkas to resign over his management of the U.S. southern border with Mexico. He warned that the new House GOP minority would investigate every order, every action, and every failure to determine whether they can begin an impeachment inquiry, which could lead to Mayorkas' impeachment if he did not resign. Under Mayorkas, more than one million known gotaways have entered the United States and more people on the FBI's terrorist screening database have been apprehended crossing the border than in the previous five years combined. Mm. Record-breaking two million migrants mm. have entered our country. In a statement given to the Heritage Foundation, Mark Morgan, former Acting Customs and Border Protection CBP Commissioner, stated that the Godaways are violent criminal offenders, including murderers, rapists, pedophiles, and gang members, making their way to every station in our nation, every state in our nation. He warned that these Godaways are potentially national security threats and expressed concern about the reality that there could already be a sleeper cell in the U.S. planning the next terrorist attack. Oh, dear God. In June, a new NPR slash IPSOS poll revealed that more than half of Americans believe that there is an invasion, invasion at the southern border. The poll also revealed that almost half of all Americans and almost 70% of all Republicans believe that Democrats are working to open our borders to more immigrants. In April, Mayorkas told lawmakers that the department had effectively managed the flow of immigrants at the border. He blamed the situation on a broken and dismantled system that is already understrained. Now that was in April of last year. Now, where are the changes? The border's still wide open. Where are the changes? My goodness, this is December. It's almost a year. My, 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 my. I'll be back. God bless you all.